Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and today I would like to uh, tell you how you can see which sites you're actually visiting if you are visiting a website. Because you might think if you're viewing a page, like for example this is a blog on my own website, that you're just visiting that particular page, but that is certainly not the case. While you are loading this page, a lot of different third-party third websites are being loaded as well. Um, and I think it's important to be aware of this. It's actually quite easy to find out which sites that, that are. So let's take a look, right? So what I'm using right here is a, is a browser called Google Chrome, uh, the same browser that probably many of you are, are using. And if you, if you, in Google Chrome, if you right click on the, on, the, on the page, there's an option called inspect, control shift I. So I will enable that. And if you enable that, what will happen is that you will enable sort of the developer console, which if you're a web developer, you would be using that a lot to see if your website uh, is functioning smoothly, if the JavaScript is being executed correctly, etc. Those things are not very interesting for us right now. What we're going to use is this uh, tab called sources, because that will give us a list of all the sources, of all the websites that have been loaded in the process of loading this particular page. Now, as I said, this is my site. I actually built it and designed this site from the ground up. So you would think that I, as a developer, have full insight and full control over uh, which sources are being loaded. But I actually do not. And this is a fact of modern life. So let's take a look at which uh, resources have been loaded and why also. So first of all, of course, there's coxi.nl, which is my own site, right? So of course that's being loaded. Then we have two Google sites, adservice.google.com and adservice.google.nl. I know where they come from. I added them to my site. They are the Google advertisements. Uh, Google APIs, okay, again, a Google service. I don't probably relate it to the advertisements. I'm not entirely sure. Then we get to addthis.com. You may not know what addthis is, but addthis is a service a third, uh, uh, that provides social media sharing buttons. So here you see in my page, I have Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Google+. I did not separately add these, but I used add this to add them to my site, right? So add this has a, it's a convenient tool for web developer. So, okay. I don't particularly like add this because it has a reputation of doing quite a bit of tracking of users. Uh, but I, it is my own fault. I did add them myself. Then we have another Google site which I added, and then we get actually to Pinterest.com. And that's an interesting case because I did not explicitly include Pinterest in my website. So what you see here is a sort of cascade effect. What I think happened is that add this, which I did add to my website, is calling in turn Pinterest. And this means that I as a web developer and certainly you as a visitor has lost control over who knows about the fact that we are visiting this website, right? Um, and this is true, I should say, for pretty much every website with very, very few example, uh, exceptions that you will ever visit on the web, right? So Pinterest knows that we're, that we're visiting this website. Google knows that we're visiting this website. Add this knows, right? And I know, of course, as Coxi.nl. But that, that makes sense because you're actually visiting Coxi. Then we have Discuss for the comments, the blog comments. Cloudfare, which is a technical website some kind of intermediary thing, which I don't know exactly what it is. Discuss again, Coxi. Facebook, okay, of course we need Facebook uh, for social media, right? So it's, Facebook is called again by add this to implement this uh, like button. Then we have some more Google. You see Google is very, very dominant, right? Facebook again, graph.facebook.com, no idea what it is. Coxi again, Pinterest again, add this again, add this again, Google again, Twitter for the tweet button, add this again, and Google Analytics to track the visitors to this website. Um, so there's nothing special about this. Pretty much every website that you will visit will load this subset of uh, third-party sites. And all these third-party sites will therefore have the opportunity to track you if they want, right? They, to, with, it, with limited extent, right? They, don't get, they cannot really extract any kind of personal information, but they know your IP address. They can set cookies, etc. So you are not, they, it is a form of tracking that is being made possible here. Um, now, why? Why do I do that? I think I see myself as a relatively privacy-minded uh, person. But as a developer of a website, you have very little choice because you need these social media buttons if you have if you have a blog. For example, here you see I wrote a blog about uh, the why I don't really like this this safety check mark safe uh, feature in Facebook, 
Um, and it has been liked on Facebook, <laughs> oh irony, uh, 403 times. And that is in part because it is so easy to like it, right? Because there is a like button right there on the site. If I would have removed that like button, Facebook would not be able to track you. Uh, but I would punish myself because it would be more difficult for my visitors to uh, to, to share my, my blog. And even just... just just out of uh, personal vanity, I, I guess. I, I want, I want, of course, my visitors to 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 like the stuff that I write. Uh, another reason is the the analytics, right? Analytics are very important. It's a term that, that refers to basically being able to know how many people visit your website, which pages they visit, etc. It's invaluable information. I really need those analytics to to maintain my website. Otherwise, I'm just groping in the dark. Uh, advertisements, well, you don't really need advertisements, but I, like everyone else, I like money, so I have advertisements in my site. And those advertisements are a way of tracking the visitor. All, all these things are basically the reasons, I would say advertisements, social media, and analytics, those are the reasons why we have those, uh, those extra sources. Now, just to convince you that this is not some, something that only dodgy sites do. In fact, it's the opposite almost. I will show you that later. Let's visit a good site, a reliable site, The Guardian. I like The Guardian, right? The Guardian is a newspaper, British newspaper. Uh, I really like to read The Guardian. I would like to write for The Guardian. I don't, but I feel like I'm the kind of guy who, could, who should kind of write for The Guardian. So who knows? Maybe sometime in the future. Um, <clears throat> Now, if you see the sources, so the Guardian is, right, it have some, has some lofty text that they're editorially independent, blah, blah, blah. They inform you of cookies, right? It all seems very reliable, and the Guardian is reliable, right? It's a good, not, nothing against the Guardian. But you see that they're loading almost 30-something uh, additional sources. And it largely overlaps with the sources that I'm loading as well for my site, namely Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc. For the same reasons, social media, uh, analytics, and advertisements. Now... If you think um, that this kind of these these third-party sources, this kind of tracking behavior, is something that uh, dodgy websites do, right? It might be if the Guardian does it, something dodgy like a porn site would do it even more. You would think just out just for fun. Let's take a look at Pornhub. Um, I will block the image so that you can pretend that you've never seen that kind of stuff. But we'll just take a look at the the sources that Pornhub loads. So Pornhub, as the name suggests, is a hub. It's a very big website for porn. Um, so, and what you see is that actually of the three websites that we've seen so far, Pornhub behaves in a sense the best. They load the fewest third-party resources. They, they do load a few, like, like double pimp SSL.com, um, for, for when one pimp just isn't enough. But in a sense, they, they load again, the same type of functionality, uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, analytics and advertisements and I think the reason that Pornhub doesn't really load as many uh, third-party sources as other uh, as other websites is because for obvious reasons the the, the visitors of web of, of Pornhub don't really have this desire to share uh, their visits on social media right so they don't have for example Facebook or Twitter etc um, so but again it does load a few uh, tracking sites and God knows what they do with your information now, so what can you do against tracking? Very, very little, right? If you, unless you want to live under a rock, you, you have to kind of accept this as a fact of life, but it's important to be aware of this. But there are a few things that you can do. For example, <clears throat> if you don't like Google, like I don't really like Google, um, a very good alternative is a website like DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is a search engine, which is actually very good, uh, just as good as Google, maybe, I think. Um, and... DuckDuckGo is so far the only website that I've uh, visited um, that actually doesn't load zero additional resources. So here you see that in the sources of DuckDuckGo, there's only DuckDuckGo. So no one else except DuckDuckGo knows right now that I'm visiting DuckDuckGo. So they are true to their word. They, re word, they really respect your, your privacy and they really do not track. Uh, so, but that's a main, a kind of a minor thing that you can do to, to limit the track. Uh, companies tracking you or your behavior on the internet, right? Because, for example, I use DuckDuckGo, but at the same time, I use also use Gmail because just my whole life focuses around Gmail. And uh, when you use Gmail, essentially, Google is reading all your emails, right? So when you're writing a secret love letter to someone, uh, there's a little love tri triangle going on between you, that other person, and Google, who knows exactly what you're writing. <clears throat> 
Right. So yeah, I think it's very important to be aware of this. It's, there's no reason to be overly paranoid because most of the sites that are tracking you are not in itself uh, dodgy or hazardous or anything. I don't think, I think companies like Facebook, despite its reputation and Pinterest and Google, etc., they are somewhat reliable, but nevertheless, it is not a very nice idea that they, that they can track all your moves on the internet. Now, uh, with that, uh, keep this in mind when you're living on the internet as we all are. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.